Welcome back. The annual South African Heroes Awards is a celebration of unsung heroes. The awards recognize and celebrate the work done by community builders in the country. These awards celebrate ordinary South Africans who are doing extraordinary things to uplift their communities. This morning we chat to the founder of the awards, Amanda Machaka, and recipient of the Ubuntu and Iconic Impact Award, actor and producer Zane Mears. A very good morning to you two. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Good, good, good to see you. Good to have on the show. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to start with you, Amanda. Just talk us through uh, the awards and uh, how over the years you know, you've celebrated the unsung heroes in the country. Yeah, so uh, actually the inspiration behind the awards is the fact that I spent some years in the newsroom, you know, mm. you know, we deal with hard news and I got to chat with some people, friends, and um, they were lamenting the fact that, you know, they don't watch news, is depressing and all of that. So mm. I thought, let us think of a platform that will offer the alternative. So I came up with South African Positive News. So I felt like it was not good enough to just profile uh, people are doing good just on yeah. uh, South African positive news. So let us come up with a, an awards ceremony that will just, you know, shine the spotlight on them and um, celebrate them in that manner. And also just put them out there because I know that these people do not necessarily have the support that they need. So if they're mm -hmm. put on that stage, uh, someone might be able to reach out and say, I want to help you. So that's how they came about. You know, trying to identify some of these unsung heroes and some of those who are not celebrated, those who are not supported, maybe some uh, it can be some sort of a tall order because it can be very challenging, I would imagine. But uh, what's the criteria that you applied in terms of coming up with some of these names and yeah. celebrating them? So the most beautiful thing is that we actually reach out to communities who are beneficiaries of the work that these unsung okay. heroes are doing. And we say, Fair tell point. us about you know, the people that you want us to celebrate. And so they know the work that they do very well because they benefit from the work mm. that they do. And so they put their names forward and then the committee will just uh, go through the names that have been submitted when nominations have been open to just verify that, yes, these are indeed people that are doing the work. That are nominated that they're nominated for and uh, so that's how we identify them oh, okay. but we also allow the heroes to um nominate themselves yes, and tell yes. us more about the work and submit evidence of what they do fair enough yeah. fair enough now this gentleman hardly needs any introduction <laughs> Brazil, and uh, you've done very very well in the industry and uh, you've been celebrated enough uh, thank you so much for you know for your unwavering contribution to the arts and creative sector in south africa so how does it make you feel uh, being honored and uh, you know being awarded for the work that you've done and in contribution to the fatherhood foundation yes so you know we don't often do these for awards so um <laughs> you know when you do um non-government work and and and, uh, and that kind of thing uh, you don't really do it for, 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 for the awards or for the recognition. I've been yeah. doing this now for um, 18 years. Next year, in our 19th year, mm -hmm. we will have reached um, our millionth outreach person. So, wow. so what we do, we go throughout the entire country, speaking to men about the importance of fatherhood and trying to get okay. uh, uh, men to understand just how important they are and also trying to rebuild the fabric of society through family. Family mm -hmm. is important. The character of every person sitting here is formed in a family. It is important that we understand and men to understand just how vital they are to the success of a nation. You know, my second book, I think we spoke about my last book the last yeah. time I was here, yeah. uh, Daddy Come Home. Daddy Come Home, Calling yeah. Father's Home, Baba Buya Kai, yeah. <laughs> to Hai. We called Father's Home. My second book is entitled Happy Family, Happy Nation. As the, na as the family is, so the nation would be two-thirds of our homes in South Africa are single-parent homes. Mm. Two-thirds. Which means more children are now growing up without a father without figure a father. Mm. than kids who are. And this causes teenage pregnancy, gang violence, drug abuse, teen suicide. All of these social ills that you can think of stem to the fact that fathers are absent, men are absent, men aren't taking their roles. Kids don't have male role models. And I'm quite keen to understand how these conversations are structured. Do you go out to communities and get the men's views on how to be the best father, on how to be a present father, or is it the other way around? Well, men have forgotten what it is. To, men are confused about manhood in South Africa so today. Sad. Um, I've spoken in all nine provinces in the last, you know, we started in 2006. We've spoken to 
every province, to every race, if you want to call them that culture. Yeah. We've been through, through the entire country, which is why we've reached a million people. And men are confused. Men don't know if they can open a car door for a woman anymore. Mm-hmm. Men, uh, are, I'm not sure if they can pay for a bill or offer a lady a jacket if she's cold, because young girls are being taught that they can do everything that a man sure. can do. You know, they're being taught these things that they don't need men in there. We've, we've got tropes and... And, and memes, stuff like hashtag men are trash, etc., etc., those kind of things. So men are just wondering, whoa, 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 where am I? Where do I still fit into society today? Mm-hmm. And, and they're confused. You know, ever since um, 94, gen- well, not just ever since 94, but since 94, um, the uptake in GBV, gender-based violence, has, has been incredible because the only way men feel that they can assert themselves is physically. It's a very sad thing. It it's is, one of our programs is. to get men to understand. Um, What's the common thread, though, in terms of uh, the men's contribution? What are they saying? Uh, men just want to know, um, is it okay to be a man? Men, men are caught in cycles sure. that they want to break. Wow. Men are caught in cycles. I don't know if you've noticed that uh, uh, in certain um, 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 families, for example, a man would be... Uh, um, caught in alcohol and drug abuse, and his son is caught in Takonyaupe or something. His father was known as the Dronki of Dengas. You know, and, and it, these are things, these are just cycles that you see uh, in a family line just carrying on and on, and it affects entire communities. And we're going, we have to break that cycle. Okay. We've got to get men to go, to go back to how we feel they were designed and created, and their, their strength is there to nurture, not to break down. You know, yeah. uh, we've got to get men to, to almost rewire their thinking about manhood and, most importantly, fatherhood. Okay. Now, Amanda, how do you measure the success of these awards? I mean, how do these awards contribute towards uh, making a difference in the lives of the recipients? In the sense that, you know, they come back and tell us how um, the, the winning the award or even being nominated for it has made an impact. Okay. Now that they find uh, partners that they can, you know, uh, drive the initiatives with, Okay. They get um, sponsors that they didn't have. So these are the kinds of things that we're looking for when we're saying that we want to put them on the spotlight so that uh-huh. they can share their uh-huh. story. As we honor them, as we recognize them, there are people in that auditorium, wherever we are doing the awards, that are saying, oh, I didn't know that there's someone who's doing this kind of a, uh, right. a, a, you know, an right. empowerment initiative. Or when they're being voted for, and we share the work that they do on social media, and someone says, I want to partner with that initiative. Mm, so that's mm. how we measure the success of the awards. And when people say that, because of course there are challenges, it's not like we, we, we are funded yeah, ourselves, course. when we say that oh, we don't think we can continue, say, no, please do, because this is helping us. Mm. So that's how we measure the success. So how does the public get involved in terms of selecting the winners? Um, uh, do we vote or do we... Yes. Like- just so, took us through the process. Right. So in February, we open nominations. That's when we ask people to nominate their community heroes okay. or the heroes themselves to nominate themselves and tell us about the work that they do. Right. And then um, around May, we then um, 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 say that these are the nominees based on the vetting that was done. And then thereafter, we say, now vote for the people that you've nominated so mm. that we can get the winners in the different categories that we have. So the public is involved from the onset up until the time we determine who the winners are in the different categories. These are such platforms that we need as a society. Thank yes. you so much for having conceptualized it and, and, and coming up and making a difference in so many people. Thanks to you two for joining us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having awesome. us. Awesome. Well, we just spoke to the founder of the South African Heroes Awards, Amanda Majaga, and recipient of the Ubuntu and Iconic Impact Award, actor and producer Zane Mears. Now, these awards celebrate ordinary South Africans doing extraordinary things.